This college baseball and college basketball picks edition of the Sports Game Podcast is brought to you by Game Time, your home for the lowest price last minute tickets. Download the Game Time app today and use promo code SGPN for twenty dollars off. We're also ready by Underdog Fantasy. Play Underdogs, pick them for a chance to win one hundred X. Promo code SGPN at underdogfantasy.com for a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Hey, this is John Smoltz, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. The Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Smell that, Sean? It's the smell of a wood bat hitting a baseball. Oh, let's go. Not something we get in the college ranks. Uh, surprised, uh, surprised Colby's even in on the idea of college baseball yeah. with the metal bat usage. I mean, metal bat. You know, Colby these, wants to go back to eighteen hundred. These quad wall, <laughs> cinco walls. Who knows how many walls they got inside those bats? Yes, the real, real uh, leather batting. You know, I, I mean, I'm sure Colby's against batting gloves. Uh, ever you think since, so? yeah, one hundred percent. Colby's against batting gloves. If it's made from the hide of a cow, maybe he's into it. No, but not this synthetic. Uh, this poly uh, polyester synthetic batting gloves. Yeah, we got a jam-packed uh, show for uh, everyone today. We got some college baseball up top. I know there's been a lot of interest in college baseball as people realize, hey, this is a sport you can gamble on. Hey, they got lines out, uh, and uh, why not hop in on it? So uh, we got Noah joining us in just a second, and then. Uh, of course, uh, Colby Dan as well, aka Pick Dundee, talking all things college basketball. Shout out to Rolex Dad in the YouTube chat, Ryan. Just tipped us twenty dollars. I would have loved I, to see his face in the avatar. You know the rules, <laughs> but uh, yeah, what a Rolex. What a, da- well, Rolex Dad probably wants to keep it uh, anonymous. <laughs> You know, yeah. So uh, have an avid, so it doesn't have to be you. We got AI artists, now right? I mean, normally, do we? Uh, what is it? One song for twenty dollars? I mean, what do you? Twenty bucks? Uh, oh, are, is he, does he go? It. Does he go? Does he get to go back to the uh, champagne room? Well, ask me anything, sir. <laughs> ask me any. I'll tell you about the time that I almost. Uh, I had this uh, stripper convinced I was a famous movie director. Oh, JJ. Uh, yeah, Ryan convinced this uh, stripper once that uh, he was JJ Abrams, writer and producer. Look nothing like JJ. Abrams, no, she did. Well, this is. I mean, she had a phone. She wasn't gonna look up IMDb and see uh, if Kramer. But she was. Didn't she plan on mailing you her journal so you could develop it as a TV show? I was run? supposed to get it that night. Uh, this led to that. I guess she got busy. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, never got that that story about her living in a train car. <laughs> It's a boxcar children with tits. Love it. It All seemed right. like more of a fr- episode of forensic files. Eventually. I felt <laughs> like I was in the middle of an episode <laughs> of forensic files. Uh, all right, let's uh, get to the show before we uh, welcome on our guests. Of course, make sure you check out game time. Uh, maybe you want to head up some college basketball. Maybe you're ready to storm the court. Uh, even though you should only storm uh, when appropriate uh, game time is the place to go. Maybe you want to check out some live college baseball again. I mean, Nothing better than sweating out your bets in person. Of course, download the Game Time app. Use the promo code SGPN. Gets twenty dollars off, and it's not just sports, music, comedy, theater. I know uh, uh, all our fans are uh, our patrons of the fine arts. But again, perfect place to take the wife, the girlfriend, mix it up, uh, treat them, and they, they don't have to know you're saving twenty bucks. Don't throw that in there. Uh, that you're doing it to support the podcast and to save yourself twenty dollars. Go to gametime.co or download the Game Time app. Use the promo code SGPN to redeem twenty dollars off. Joining us on the line, you know them both from the college experience. We got Colby Dant, aka host of the College Basketball Experience, aka Pick Dundee. What's happening, Colby? Uh, uh, preferred preferred wood bat, wood bat, Sean. Sean. Oh, I know. And uh, but but look. 
I'm not going to totally throw out the metal bat thing. Your chances of getting struck by lightning go up. That's always, <laughs> oh, that's okay. always entertainment. Yeah. You know, what is that, this? What? We can't have a struck by lightning take. What is this take? You like well, aluminum bats? No, wood, wood over okay. aluminum all day. Okay. But I will but, say, can I tell? Can I tell a quick wood bat story, Sean? Sure, we got time. So I'm, uh, you know, the the older daughter has has a boyfriend. He's a, he's a, he's at least an athlete. Plays baseball. I'm Whoa. watching his uh, team play. A little, uh, I guess they call this spring training or, or off season ball. And uh, this kid from the other team walks to the plate with a wooden bat. Uh, his the the boyfriend's dad is telling me how much of a pitcher's park this is. Very, he's very rarely seen a ball leave the park. This kid with the wood bat proceeds to smash the ball to a place where every parent smash. said they'd never seen a ball go to. And the sound that that crack made, no. I, I mean, it should have gotten every woman in the arena aroused. <laughs> it was electric. I, and why they don't do this on the regular, I, I don't get it. Be be men, use a wood bat. This next <laughs> gentleman, he gets aroused from oh, uh, nice. from from the sound of any bat hitting any ball. You know him from the college baseball experience and the college basketball experience. Noah Beanick. Noah, what's happening, man? What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me on the show. Um, yeah, I'm excited to talk ball, but uh, you mentioned the wood bats. You know, the guys are allowed to use wood bats if they want to. Last year on Oregon's super regional team, their leadoff hitter was nice. Japanese. His name was Riku Nishida, and he was he used a wood bat most Riku time. Nishida. I need a list of every player in college baseball that uses a wood uses a wood bat yeah, so I can start wood. rooting for them. The all wood squad. This now, is why why would someone uh, now again, why would someone use a wood bat over an aluminum bat? Just to prove a point? So they yeah, can just, work it? It would be just to prove a point, honestly, because uh, Nishida especially was very much not a power hitter. So if you're not going to put it over the fence with a metal bat, you know, just show off with the wood, have some flash. I like it. Is there, but is there any advantage to a wood bat? Like, are you? No, there's an advantage you, to it, a metal okay. bat, actually. Usually, <laughs> yeah. the aluminum or the composite uh, oh. models they tend to add three to four miles an hour of exit velocity off of Jesus. Them. Oh. I would argue that there is an advantage when you hit a dinger, you go to break the bat like Bo Jackson, kind of hard with the aluminum bat. Yeah, no, uh, you're you're a college baseball expert. Has anyone uh, broken an aluminum bat during college yeah. baseball? There, there are a handful of situations where it's happened. I've actually that happened to me once too. Uh, what, literally really? saw it off right at the handle where the yeah, so they not on your knee, barrel. not on not, your knee. But if you no, can break, if you knee. can if you can break it with a pitch, why not break it across your knee? I'm calling all college baseball athletes if. You are brave enough to smash a college uh, an aluminum bat across your knee and break it. Hundred dollar SGPN gift card, courtesy of there we go. That doesn't even cover say, the cost we'll of the bat, but we'll see. Uh, come on, Noah. Going. Come on. Don't don't uh, oh, don't Sean, expose Noah, the gift. Sean was so proud that he had he went up to three figures and you just like yeah. you backhanded <laughs> him right in the face. He I saw if we can get a slow motion replay, you can see the joy leave Sean's face. Yeah, he was so no, happy I was like, for that. oh, that's some actually these, not a good idea. I might some of these sticks are in the mid five hundreds. It's nuts. <laughs> Jesus, how can they afford to to, to maintain? The, baseball is going to get canceled everywhere once uh, each once program, football leaves. Each program usually has bat deals, and they tend to get two models of each uh, size and length and weight. So no. All right. All right. As much as everyone wants to dive deep into bat analysis, I was, I was uh, just getting erect. Let's talk a little college baseball and some actual <laughs> picks. Uh, Noah has been on a heater with picking some college baseball. Noah, a couple big games uh, looking forward to on the weekend. We got East Carolina number 11th overall versus North Carolina, uh, East Carolina minus 120, North Carolina minus 110, total looking at 13 and a half. Uh what are we looking at here? Yeah, so first off, these odds technically they're not official. I'll put that out there immediately. Uh these are some that I created and then I ran them by actually one of my buddies in the space. Uh one of the only ones that I know with a college baseball model. Uh, so he has like the history of kind of how these lines. So maybe we work. need a we we probably need a nickname for Noah like N Palm or uh, yeah. some sort of NB Palm. <laughs> that would that would could, be for that would be for him. Shout out to Jake Fetner of Sportsline CBS Sports. Oh, okay. but, oh, you you can have yours and it's we've already got model. the cocktail napkin. Going, there you go. So, <laughs> so yeah. That's right. the model. I like yeah. it. Yeah. What, yeah. So, so 
You got East Carolina as a slight favorite over uh, North Carolina here. Correct. This is technically a road game for ECU at North Carolina. Uh, in this series, I think they do it extremely well. Um, game two is a neutral site game, and then game three, East Carolina gets the host. So it's like a true three game series. It's totally even. Um, you know, they've scheduled this thing from every year after COVID. Usually the two teams defend their home stadiums pretty dang well. Uh, but in 2023, both of them traded road wins here. So uh, Saturday is going to be amazing. You get both fan bases in a uh, North Carolina minor league baseball stadium. So that should be great. Um, my handicap for this game, though, takes place solely on the mound here. Um, North Carolina's ace had a preseason UCL surgery, and he's out for the season. Uh, so the Tar Heels, they're already behind the eight ball, especially considering East Carolina always has usually a top tier ace in college baseball this year it's no different they've trey you savage which is one of the best names in college baseball uh you you savage was seven and one with a 261 era 105 strikeouts last year in 76 innings he had a 207 sierra which kramer gave me shit bringing up some saber metrics on uh on, on the on Beeson the other the other week uh i'll talk about that more in my next handicap but a 207 Sierra is basically elite. Um, and then last Friday, Folger Bowes pitched for North Carolina. And I think he's going to start here for this Friday as well. He's a blue chip freshman uh, prospect ranked 57th uh, left-handed pitcher in the 2023 class. But last week he had a solid five inning start. That was against Wagner. East Carolina is a big step up in competition here, especially in an in-state matchup with this much like hanging on it. Give me ECU minus the 120 here. Now, no, uh, Folger is wait, correct me. What's this guy's name? Folger? His name's Folger, F O L G E R, okay. Bose, B O A Z. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a guy who's, are we sure this guy isn't running uh shine in the Appalachian Hills? Like, I mean, I, I feel like you get some good moonshine from a guy named Folger Bose. You just gotta, you gotta watch his distillery gets a little hot. Might explode there. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll trust your instincts and uh, tail your East Carolina play, Colby. I assume you're riding with the Pirates. I mean, he didn't mention though Parker Bird. Um, mm. You oh. know, the best story in sports right now. It is. What's what's uh, what's awesome about him? He's, he's got, got so a leg. Yeah, he's got a prosthetic leg, and he's he's he was in a water accident, water water power boat Loading. accident. Yeah. Um, and uh, he came back and, you know, he's, he's, he's he, yeah, look, let me tell you something about East Carolina guys. And, and I, I think, I think, uh, you know, I think this is got his soundboard plugged because in. when you're in East Carolina, <laughs> you go for it every time. This is coming. Oh, you don't coach at East Carolina. You don't come to East Carolina. You don't play at East Carolina with a weak heart. Right. right. Oh God. Turn this <laughs> on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just it's I'm I'm obligated well, by, by the contract. Dog sound effect earlier. I could tell Sean was like, "What the fuck was that?" I thought I thought that at first I thought that was actually Colby making the dog. No, sound. that was me. That was that, that was, was me. Colby. Saying yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that was me. It, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then the I played sound. it. But Colby did a good Im- imitation. Look, East Carolina's a smash spot here because North Carolina is a bunch of wine and cheese pussies. We're gonna go down the Chapel Hill. Their alcohol sales will never reach this high ever again. And I guarantee you, when we win, we storm the field like we did with those filthy pussy pack NC State bitches. Let's go, East this. Carolina, all day. Let's go. This is there. This is a true, uh, you know, little brother situation for the ECU boys. Uh, Kramer, I assume you're on ECU oh, as well. Uh, I all I do is tail no. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not going to bother I, coming up with uh, the amount of people pretending like I know about college. DM baseball. me. Like first of all, I, I fully respect the audience for thinking I'd have a college baseball take. Mm. What are we doing today with Nebraska? And I'm like, ah, uh, <laughs> you should hit up Noah. And he goes, really? I go, he does a podcast on that. He goes, the guy goes, you just blew my mind, bro. Thank you so much. Oh I assume God. he hit up Noah as well. I, I but, finally know what it's like to feel like a, a nine or a 10 in college. Like, a <laughs> you know, just so many people in the DMs. Yeah. It's, it's you nuts. wake up, your D your D your, your direct yeah. messages are full. They just want your picks. Like, 
Yeah, all these randos hitting you up, I'm, like, whoa, nice profile photo. No, I'm that's not actually, used to it. No, that's what you tell your parent. You tell your mom, be like, I, you know, all these fans, they just want my pics. Like, what are you yeah. doing, Noah? What have you done with yourself? Well, you uh, know, that's that's the thing. I just tell them, hey, just Google college baseball pics for me for one second, and then they see like the seven links that I have on the first page of Google, and they're like, holy shit. Yeah, it's funny what what helps someone think something's real. Yes. Well, uh, we got a real matchup here. Number twenty, UCLA Bruins plus one thirty-five at the TCU Horn Frogs. Noah and Palm has this originated at minus one sixty for the Horn Frogs, twelve and a half total in Lupton Stadium, game one of a three-game series. Noah, what do we like here? Yeah. So this is a super interesting series to me because I think both teams are pretty similar to each other. Uh, both squ- squads have really nice young cores. However, last year, UCLA, they dealt with so many injuries and it completely derailed their season and everything clicked for TCU and they went to Omaha. Um, UCLA is typically known for having some high end pitching prospects, but this year they just don't have a dude uh, at the start of the rotation. Uh, both guys that would have pros- possibly been like a, a, an elite Friday starter, both of them transferred to LSU. So Junior mm. Luke Jewett. Uh, he had a rough first outing last Friday for UCLA. He allowed four runs in 5.1 innings. Uh, last season, Jewett uh, didn't really excel either. He had a 531 ERA and 20.1 innings, but it was a limited sample size. And again, I'm going to bring up the Sierra here. Uh, his Sierra was a 267. So he had a 531 ERA, 267 Sierra. Sierra and FIP are two predictive statistics for baseball pitch- pitchers. Uh, ERA is cool. But that stat's also kind of the chalk. It's like the thing that everybody looks at, and it's recorded based off of past performance. As DGENs, we're trying to predict what's going to happen in the future here um, and whether regression or progression is due. Uh, FIP only takes into account things that pitchers can control, like strikeouts, walks, and home runs. That's solid for MLB. But I prefer Sierra in college baseball basically because it takes into account a ball that's put in play. Look, at the end of the day, these are all amateur baseball players. 90% of them won't even get into the MLB's minor leagues. So losers, they they can't stick out guys 75% of the time like the MLB. So anyways, I prefer Sierra when looking at college baseball. Anything under three is elite. And like I said, Jewett, he had a 267. So he's expected to make some serious progress this season. TCU, they have an interesting player on the mound in their own right. His name's Peyton Tolley. Uh, he's a two-way player that can hit bombs at the plate, and he also has a weird left-handed arm slot on the mound sitting in the low 90s. I have a small 35-to-1 sprinkle on Tully to win the college uh, – to win basically college baseball's Heisman, the Golden Spikes Award. Unfortunately, uh, Tully got rocked in his first start as well by Florida Gulf Coast, giving up four runs in three innings with three walks. Uh, both offenses had great first weekends. However, UCLA, they hit pretty well in a three-game sweep over Gonzaga, who usually has good pitching in their own right. So I'm going to settle with UCLA at plus money in this game. Love it. Love uh, love Jewett as a dog, UCLA as a dog. couple notes. Yeah. Uh, one, Fangraphs has a great five-part series on Sierra if you'd like to learn more. Uh, secondly, uh, unlike Noah, I prefer XFIP. Um, oh, wow. Noah's really showing his old soulness by l- preferring FIP. Uh, so yeah, uh, but yeah, if, if you're a- actually interested in the saber metric stuff, fan graphs is a great, uh, great place to go learn more about that shit. I agree. Call me any, th- are you riding with the Bruins? No, uh, TCU was a great team a year Whoa. ago. They wow. bring back some of those guys chase. I'm not going to get Brunson out in the middle of nowhere. Is going to hit a couple, a couple dingers against his weak <laughs> pitching staff. Let's go. Give me the TCU Ooh. horn frogs. I, I like this. I like that. Colby has a baseball take. Yeah. G- Kramer, what are you doing? I I mean, come on. <clears throat> Solid pitching here. as a dog. That's all I need for a baseball. Noah handicap. mentioned that he only knows of one person with a model. I have a model. Yes. Uh, let's see. What did Noah do? Uh, are we on UCLA <laughs> Noah? Yes, we UCLA. Are. Come on. By the way, um, <laughs> the simplest kind of model. Tailing someone. Oh else. yes, very like, very profitable model. What's your model? I just follow that guy. Uh, okay, moving over, we have t- we have a couple of notable tournament uh, games here. The Kubota College Baseball Series in Gold Life Park, Arlington, Texas, Michigan. You're a Michigan man, Noah. They're plus one fifty dogs projected line. Thanks to N Palm, uh, Oklahoma State <laughs> minus one ninety five the other way. Total sitting at fourteen. 
What do we like? Yeah, so I, I'm actually super bummed. I was aiming the entire offseason to go to this tournament. Um, but the way that it's kind of going to be laid out, <laughs> if I were to go to this, it would be a five-week span of going to Arlington for a weekend for college baseball, then going to Florida for a family vacation, and then oh, going to wow. Vegas for March Madness. So I'm like, fucking how you know rich. What? You know what? The wallet can't take it, but I, I, I'm really <laughs> bummed to miss out. Um, all, uh, so... Although I'm a Michigan fan, we're kind of in like a retooling, rebuilding phase right now. Our offense is light years ahead of the pitching staff. Uh, currently, that entire core from the 2019 College World Series runner-up team has moved on. And our coach from that team, Eric Backich, is gone and he's thriving with Clemson, uh, where he began his coaching career. So no hard feelings, but he continues to recruit away the guys that were going to commit to Michigan. So that's definitely a large issue here. Uh, our new head man, Tracy Smith, has a high pedigree. He led the famous Kyle Schwarber Indiana team to the College World Series in 2013. So I believe in him, but it's going to take some time, uh, especially if you can't bring in uh, some homegrown talent. Uh, he hammered the transfer portal, and he also did land one inter interesting freshman from Massachusetts and Dylan Big U. He's actually the best pitcher on the staff. Uh, he's going to start Friday night here against Oklahoma State. He lives in the mid-90s with his fastball. Um, but it, he's going to take his fair share of lumps and bruises along the way. For example, he got pretty he got hit pretty hard against Western Michigan on opening day uh, down in Arizona. So much like us, uh, Oklahoma State also struggles to pitch effectively. Sam Garcia started for the Pokes last Friday. He did not look great. Garcia is a transfer from High Point that had a one and eight record with a 7.57 ERA, 44 innings last season. Uh, in his first start, he allowed four runs in 4.1 innings, and he currently has an 8.31 ERA stamp to his name. So I mentioned, uh, you know, a couple of notable players in this game. The offenses are going to rake here. I I like the over 14 runs in this tilt, and I would I would also take Oklahoma State. Usually, my strategy uh, when taking money lines in college baseball is anything over minus 180. Um, that gets kind of put away into like a parlay building par pile where I'll try to put together like so Oklahoma State's minus 195 in this game. I'll find like another 220 <laughs> minus 220 price, and I'll put them together uh, as a money line parlay. Um, that's typically so you'll, how. You'll, I, you know, you like Oklahoma State. Uh, He's late in Michigan. That's wow. how you know it's a good pick. Yeah. Red flag. Red flag Why? right there. Colby, are you taking Michigan? No, uh, you don't take. Okay. You don't overthink this. Big Ten baseball's ass, and uh, Mickey Mantle was born <laughs> in Oklahoma. I will go with Carson Benj and uh, Bo Sylvester. The bats are hot there in Stillwater. Let's go. I'm just taking the over 14. I, I don't mess around with minus 195 favorites. Kramer. Uh, I think, I think what I heard was we're building parlays. So um, I'm in, I'm also based on what my model says. Uh, I also like fading <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> All right. I but thought I was going to have to scold Noah for taking Michigan. And then I, he found his way. Cause of course you, you know, about uh back itch. The, the coach of Clemson, Sean, yes. uh, Noah and I both with a tremendous amount of CLV in our pocket. <laughs> Uh, it's, I saw the, the the current futures for Clemson to win it all twenty eight to one. Of course, you remember we got down 30, 40, oh, 40, 40, to 40 to one. Wow! Yeah. I, I had to give out thirty to five to one uh, on on the Veasan show because that was what a, was available at the time. I already had achieved some CLV. CLV CLV continues to grow, which of course will lead me to more V this year. Kramer, uh, Kramer's a sharp. He handicaps college baseball in the preseason and gets down on those futures oh, two yes. weeks gets before a, gets the ahead season of the begins. Oh, yeah, I love 100%. it. When any anytime someone wants a paper ticket, it's great. I just uh, end up with investment. Uh, you mentioned Veasan. Uh, moving up uh, our Veasan time slot, we are now uh, six o'clock Pacific every Friday, six to eight p.m. So a little earlier uh, on the East Coast. First of those episodes uh, this Friday. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Noah, last game of the slate: Arkansas at Oregon State. You got this graded uh, pretty evenly. Noah, Noah must be working for the books. He's a minus one fifteen both ways here. Uh, yeah, total it's sitting typically at 12. the college baseball juice, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, sitting here at twelve and a half. What do we like here, and why is it Oregon State? 
Yeah, so the marquee matchup of the weekend here, appointment television on the vastly improved Flow Sports. Uh, usually I, I, I'm a very, <laughs> very, very vocal hater of Flow Sports, Flow Baseball. <sighs> it's still an outrageous price, but the product has improved over the last four <laughs> years that they've been putting college baseball on this dang thing. But last March, we had a legendary matchup between Mike Trout and Shohei Otani in the World Baseball Classic. There's going to be another clash, international clash here uh, between Arkansas's American left-handed pitcher and Hagen Smith and Oregon State's Australian second baseman and Travis Bazana. Hopefully, we're going to see that a couple of times in this game. Both guys, they're surefire first-rounders in the MLB draft, and they represent the strengths of each other's teams here. Uh, Oregon State, they have one of the nation's best offenses in the country. The Beavers are averaging 10 runs a game with the nation's ninth-best team OPS with a 12-10. And Bazan is a large part of that because he's flat out raking right now. 563 batting average, 1963 OPS. He has three blasts in four games to go along with six runs scored and seven RBIs. Currently, that's not even an updated stat line as they're playing against Texas Tech right now in Globe Life Park. So they're going to have a one game advantage of just being used to uh, this park before Arkansas even comes in and plays. So Oregon State was smart. They got ahead of the ahead of the deal here and they're playing a game in Arlington against Texas Tech. So Hagan Smith last year, uh, Arkansas's projected starting pitcher here. He was eight and two with a 364 ERA. He had 109 strikeouts in 71.2 innings. However, he is a possible regression candidate. Uh, this season he, he entered the season with a 447 FIP, which would fit the narrative of him getting banged around in his first start he had last week against James Madison. He allowed three runs in the first inning and head coach Dave Van Horn didn't even send him out for the second inning on opening day in front of the home fans that all came to see him. So, you know, as a Hall of Fame, a future Hall of Fame coach that DVH is, he could be trying to press some buttons here, sending his ace a, a, a big message. But, uh, you know, Hagen Smith is truly the X factor in this game as the Hogs, they didn't really return a ton of offensive production. They're only averaging seven runs a game. They need some guys to step up at the plate. They hit well during opening weekend, but that was against James Madison. Ultimately, I'm going to side with Oregon State. Uh, they go. are used to the friendly confines of Globe Life Park after they were up 6 nothing early here against this Texas Tech. We'll see what happens here um, in this game. But uh, I think if we were to eliminate, uh, you know, Hagen Smith's ceiling, which he's due for regression and also he didn't look great in his first game, I would favor Oregon State in this elite offense here on Friday. So Aiden May, he's a transfer from Arizona. Um, he's he's reaching in the high 90s with his fastball. fastball. Uh, he's, uh, they're, they're saying he's improved vastly from last year where he did have a 633 ERA. Trust me, I'm not ignoring that. But I'll take the Beavers here at the minus 115 price. Noah loves the Beavers. Colby, do you? I mean, first off, he's throwing slander at JMU, and currently they're up two nothing on Virginia Tech. Um, I proving, took them today. Too. Yes, <laughs> proving who's, who's the best team in Virginia again. Uh, but uh, I mean, look, I, I want to take the Beavs. I want to take the Beavs because of the story. But Arkansas had a fan pick up a uh, a a a, a, uh, a possum and Check hold it up. Your college baseball experience bingo card when we talk yes, about Arkansas. Yes, hold it up and got a standing ovation at in Fayetteville. There, Fayetteville's not that far from Arlington, Texas. Um, I yeah, think that Arkansas fans up. might travel, uh, whether they have rabies or not. They will travel and go to this game. Uh, Razorbacks get it done, unfortunately, against my beeves. One one last thing that I want to touch on with these two games, or these four teams are playing a round robin against each other the entire weekend. Oklahoma State, Michigan, Arkansas, Oregon State. They're going to be the showcase games of the weekend. Last weekend, there was a similar tournament between eight teams. Unders went, uh, it was a combined five and one. Or Ooh. no, not a, not a five and one. It was a uh, combined eight and one. Sorry, I apologize. Wow. Uh, so you're suggesting that these are these like these early season shindigs uh, guys get a little tight. They play more seriously. Um, just a big stage. Yes. But also this is hmm. a large MLB park. Like globe life is a pitcher's park in the MLB. Um, and you know, typically these sec shoe boxes, they're hitting home runs left and right. <laughs> uh, big park. It, it It's not typically the odds makers are setting these lines to be in the shoe boxes that we normally see college baseball games played in. So all right. Uh, unders have been almost automatic. 
So write that down, Sean. More unders, unders in the uh, the shindig and globe life. Don't park. unders, don't unders outside of the shoebox. Yeah, there you go. Uh, don't unders forget, outside, outside we we shoebox. promoted it last season, uh, going into postseason play. But uh, first day, the Friday overs in college baseball's NCAA tournament, like those oh. were those were automatic. The first two years last year it was the first losing season since I tracked it, but. Yeah, I'm looking to run that back again this year. So overs, that feels weird. Friday yeah, overs, the- NCAA tournament day one. All right, I'm locked baseball, in on Oregon baseball. State. Uh, We're getting Noah. too close to March Madness <laughs> to talk about overs. <laughs> Noah, uh, appreciate you calling in. Make sure you subscribe. Yes. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs> Thanks to for having the me, guys. College baseball experience. Appreciate you calling in, Noah. Uh, best of luck out there in the college world. Uh, Thank rock you. it. Uh, hey, we're gonna talk uh, college hoops here in a second. Of course, shout out to Underdog Fantasy. If you haven't signed up with UnderdogFantasy.com, what are you waiting for? Got you covered for uh, some college basketball pickums, and uh, great thing is, hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars. College basketball, NHL, NBA, golf—they uh, really uh, do it all. The higher and lower is super fun. Uh, you can combine and get up to one hundred X over at UnderdogFantasy.com. Promo code SGPN. All right, uh, talking hoops here with Colby Dant. Coming off, uh, I, I mean, interesting uh, slate to say the Sean, least. You got to start tagging the college baseball experience as the only college baseball betting podcast. Yeah, is there? I mean, I don't think anyone else is doing it. Who cares if it's true? <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, go find me another one. Noah uh, clearly not getting laid. No, I mean no, no just offense locked to Noah, on, but uh, locked in on. Uh, I think that's what you call. It. You don't call it N Palm. You just call it Noah. Noah. That's it. That's the name. I don't of the know, stat. guys. He's been on fire this regular season. You know what? Money buys. Money buys. Pussy. All right. Well, no, no, we don't want it to buy. <laughs> the, the the downfall. He's gonna, he's gonna get a subwoofer in that yeah. LeBaron tint the windows. We're never gonna see that guy. The again. down. Yeah. <laughs> Noah getting laid would be the downfall of. Uh, his productivity. It would, uh, it would it would destroy our business. Yeah, okay. he's perfectly good. Really? Because I had I had I I was uh, you, we've been raising funds in the college basketball experience show for uh, yeah, multiple jar. prostitutes. You're multiple prostitutes. No, we already got him to Vegas, but uh, <laughs> we've been thinking when he lands three prostitutes. M- really? Minimum. So the ch- yeah. is the chat looking the me? ultimate the ultimate round robin Noah <laughs> and two prostitutes. This is diabolical. So if you're doing it for the chat, there's going to have to be some video record. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he's one of those guys who will get penetration. Ooh, that's Interesting, a, a uh, spicy slate. We're coming off. I hit Syracuse on the money line. My locks went zero and two. L- lock percentage still sixty seven percent. Colby hit both his locks fifty eight percent for the year on his locks. Kramer one and zero or one and one on his locks fifty eight percent. Discord really put us in a body bag. No nah. four and one. We are still kicking Discord's ass. We are a hundred and eight eighty three and two. So we are still. Firing at fifty seven percent on our consensus plays, but not a uh, not a great night overall last night. Although we hit some spots, I mean, I feel Mm. like we were all in on Creighton. Uh, That was, I mean, UConn got out to a nice lead early, but then Creighton just put it on them. Uh, I look back, Iowa winning, Iowa winning, Iowa winning outright. Uh, That was a little, uh, (laughs) that was a little crazy. But what do you mean? I had that. I had the fade the national championship parlay. Oh yeah. That hit, you know. What was San that? Diego State, San Diego State fade the national championship from a year ago. UConn and San Diego State both lost. I, I don't remember him, him giving that out on this show. No, not really? on this show. Different show. I do so many shows. I guess it's hard to it's hard to uh, keep oh track my of. God. You know? Here we go. Here we go. I regret not having more favorites. Yeah, Ryan, you made the mistake of getting on some dogs. One of your one of your worst <laughs> days of the card. We'll, we'll take care of that. Don't worry. All right, let's get to it. What do we got? All right, so uh, somehow, and uh, this is on this historic day, there's an anonymous uh, Python. P- perhaps it's uh, fitting. SGP Python. B- foreshadowing for the, there to be a Python <laughs> here in the Google Sheet watching <laughs> us live as Colby somehow followed fucking instructions. Uh, hey, uh, we're going to promote the college baseball up top and how Noah doesn't have any sex. And uh, here we are. Boom. Doesn't come in with fifteen or sixteen games. We're only going to be discussing a uh, very slim eleven. And what is this? Colby Dan has a, a card. Oh, nineteen ninety three All Star card. And I'm curious. 
I'm curious. Uh, <laughs> l- let me see this. It says superstar talent. I'm going to read off some of the oh, attributes. Let's hear it. Uh, it says I'm a, a blazing speed on the bases. Okay. Amazing on in the clutch. The um, oh, amazing, wow. uh, amazing in the clutch, which I think is just 100% no. accurate. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Respected team leader. Ooh. All right. Uh, no, 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 no. Unbelievable power hitter, which Look, the amount of pods that I mean, come on, I think this fits. Um, and uh, magical magnetic glove, you know. So I don't know what that means, but let's go. We, we and were. also highest paid in the majors. I have a fourteen-year contract for six hundred million dollars. Appreciate it. Um, I we were discussing earlier if you were going to be pro or against uh, batting gloves. Sounds like. Sounds like you're four gloves. Yeah, hold that, way. hold that photo up. Are you using a uh, aluminum pad here, Colby? No, <laughs> and wearing no, batting gloves? That no, that's, wooden. Wooden. That's, wooden. that's wooden. That's wooden. That's wooden. Bat. Yeah, I mean it's in the majors. It would be a wood bat. All right, they don't let them use the metal ones still, Sean. All right, uh, we are discussing uh, Thursday, February twenty second, two two two, or as Chris Berman once said, did 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 did. Uh, Ber- Berman <laughs> likes to get down and smuggle drugs. Pretty awesome individual. West Lafayette, Indiana, plays host to Rutgers. Oh, the the kids from Jersey coming to town to take on Purdue is a big favorite. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, Purdue is going to absolutely murder. Yeah, Rutgers, I mean so. Purdue coming off the straight up, up loss. I know you're laying sixteen, but oh. thankfully it's Rutgers on the road. This is. This is just the perfect spot for a Purdue team that lost to Ohio State. They had that dead coach bounce, got rid of their new head coach. Uh, we'll talk about what could happen to them uh, in a second here. But I mean, Purdue is just going to destroy this Rutgers team, uh, offensively, defensively. They can't make the spread high enough. I'm I, I love them laying sixteen. Yeah. I mean, look—you never like to take the 339th offense on the road in general, but then you add it into them throwing, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, going on the road to West Lafayette, into the into Mackey Arena. They're going to get destroyed with Purdue coming off the loss. And remember, Rutgers beat them there a year ago, so I think that's added motivation to uh, to Purdue getting it done. Kramer, you're on Purdue, I assume. Oh, 100 percent. Uh, not only do I have to correct my sins of taking Stop. too many dogs, uh, Rutgers is trash. I mean, the Rutgers at home, yeah, sure, we can talk about it, but them on the road. I feel like Rutgers epitomizes uh, what the Big Ten is going to do in the tournament too. Going to see a lot of bad basketball being played. I, that Iowa, Michigan State. I mean, Michigan State are they in the tournament, Colby? Right on that bubble, man. Yeah, I think they, it's hard. Well, which means probably find, with Tom Izzo, yeah, probably, yeah. And they're gonna just look like ass against some like well put together like mid mid. It's it's gonna be sad for the Big Ten. Sorry, Big Ten. SMU uh, Discord gets their first pick with Rutgers. Uh, enjoy, fuckers. SMU heads to Boca Raton, Florida, to take on FAU. Feel like I've seen some hate for uh, the Owls of late. Uh, maybe they're not getting it done against the spread like they they should be. Um, Five and a half. We're laying here. Five and a half. This oh, is yeah, uh, these are these are prick done. Are these available, Colby? Yeah. These are okay. This is real. Yeah. Should I check uh, again F- right now? FAU laying five. Well, uh, Sean responded as if this was no, no, no. I thought I thought no. I saw a four and a half. Oh, but. Okay. Florida Atlantic minus five and a half against SMU. Uh, what what are we doing here? We still like FAU to win it all. No, uh, look, it's different being it's different being the hunted. I'm not even talking about in the AAC. I was on South Florida to beat them uh, in Tampa the other night, and it's different. Yeah, a they went from the Conference USA to the AAC, so they went up a class. And also, you come into the season with this Final Four, uh, you know, run that you had a year ago. Every other school there is saying, "Hey, wh- what what is this Final Four nonsense? We're going to take you down. Welcome to the AAC. You're not playing uh, Louisiana Techs anymore." Um, SMU is about to go to the ACC. They're spending money. They got George Bush brokering deals for them to get to the AAC. All right. Uh, I just think Florida Atlantic's got that target on their back. And to me, SMU is a good enough team to stay within that number. Florida Atlantic may win the game still. I know they're 10 and 1 at home, uh, but SMU has been solid. They're a top 20 defensive team, they're 52nd in offensive rating. And to me, they, they have some athletes that might be able to pose some, some problems for SMU as far as height. Um, so 
I will take a shot on the Mustangs plus the points. FAU maybe maybe they escape with a win and stay you know in the mix to win that one seed wow. spot. But I think SMU can do it. I don't even think it's a I don't think it's a crazy money line play. SMU coming in hot. They've won uh, six in a row, including road win. You know they beat Memphis at home, beat Tulane on the road, uh, beat uh, beat East Carolina on the road. Uh, Lucky, Florida but, State yeah. on the road, so they they've they've actually looked pretty good on the road. I'm with you, Colby. I think you got to take the five and a half. This feels like a could be at least a you know we'll close here as a one possession game. Uh, I like SMU in the points. Kramer, not worried about free throws. They're pretty even. Hmm. SMU is pretty bad free throw shooting team. Sixty eight point nine, FAU seventy one point six. So that's not that's not a crazy discrepancy. Okay. No, I mean two point uh, two point seven. I mean, I don't think you can look at like that's a strange time to use the actual difference. You have to look at where it puts them in in the the nation. Like being slightly below average versus versus one of the worst, you know, twenty percent in the in the country shooting free throws. That matters. Five and a half points. That sure. that will matter. Uh, I think the the angle that if I was taking SMU, the angle would be I think SMU seventh in offensive rebounding percentage as well. Yeah, that that that's definitely an advantage for them. Um, but yeah, you're you would be you would be suggesting that you're out on FAU and they're not going to bounce back here. They've been solid at home the entire season. I'm obviously on the chalk here. We're getting a discount on the number. Would have been curious to know what the uh, to to know what Noah has has this project. Does <laughs> Noah do basketball as well? Can we, can he does. We, uh, he's, he's got basketball. He's got uh, cocktail napkin numbers. This guy, I I love it. As he just lock him up in that basement. Don't let him leave. All right, Discord's not getting anything for that pick. Grand Canyon heads to sh- ooh, Stephenville, Texas. Tarleton State. What are we doing? What? How is this? We're down to eleven games, and here we are with a Grand Canyon Tarleton <laughs> matchup. Uh, and it's oh, not the fans even, love Tarleton, Ryan. Uh, Grand Canyon uh, showing uh, showing everyone how you can just create uh, athletic programs out of air and be successful with money. Grand Canyon laying five here on the road. Tarleton, a proud program. Colby, what are we doing here? Why oh, are we talking the- about this game? These are the top two teams in the WAC. Uh, Grand Canyon has the, the the least amount of losses in all of college basketball, um, and uh, they did win by what I think twenty eight earlier this year. But that was at home in their lit environment. Now they hit the road to go to Tarleton, and Tarleton's won six in a row. And they they've had a little tragic magic situation with Billy Gillespie, their mm. head coach. I think he needs like a kidney transfer or something. Um, uh, but anyway. They've been fire lately. They've won key games. They won at Seattle, which was one of the harder places to win in this conference. So, I like the the points here in Tarleton. You look at them; they're our top 100 defensive team, and they're they're pretty fire at home. They're eight and two. I mean, and they had the, some some blunders early in the year, but it seems like they've got their shit together. Uh, do worry about the three point shooting because they're horrible at shooting the three. But I I think. Revenge on the mind. The way that uh, Grand Canyon beat them the the year before, or sorry, the game before. I I like the team that's also the better free throw shooting team, Sean. So load up on uh, Charlton. Let's go. Look at you trying to sway Sean at the last minute. There, <laughs> free throws didn't bother. Di- it didn't bother him in the last matchup. We'll see. No, this is it's it's not a huge difference. It's one point four percent. Yeah. We need a monocle for you when you're examining free throw. Yeah, taking a deep dive here. I mean, get the stethoscope. Great, Grand Canyon is a really good team, but are they an elite team on the road? I mean, they've, but they've looked pretty good on the road. Sean, been, yes. Have you have you been to the Grand Canyon? Yeah. Uh, did you have you ever hiked the Grand Canyon? No, I didn't Jesus, hike it. Well, well, I'm just saying, I did a little hiking, and I I didn't see any pythons in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Fang gang unite. Oh, and shout out to the, uh, the uh, diehard patrons of the uh, SGPN uh, patron only shirts. The uh, Python shirts will be coming shortly. Oh yeah. There's Design's a, pretty awesome. I so. want to say there's a half dozen of you who have are, are past your six month mark. Yes. Qualified. You will be getting the uh, Python shirts coming soon. The spring series. Uh, this is tough. Cause I think Tarleton state is playing pretty good ball as, as Colby laid out. I'm going to take them here as the home dog. Uh, they've won six in a row. I think they're going to hang around. I mean, Grand Canyon is a good program, but I think you got to go home dog here. 
Uh, Tarleton puts you on the line. Uh, Grand Canyon's one of the best teams in the nation at getting to the line. Uh, they take the eighth most, or they score their points. They have the eighth most points from free throws in the nation. Uh, and again, they, they're going to get to the line in this one. Colby, it was right to point out that Tarleton can shoot well from the line, but so can Grand Canyon. So, uh, going to be one of those games where when you bet against them, you're going to be annoyed with all these free throws. But uh, remember, I told you so. Uh, also, this is one where they're going to look a little funny coming off the bus, Sean. If you take Tarleton, Tarle- no, you take Tarleton, you're going to be like, why does this team look like an inter- intramural team versus a team that looks like it has some dudes who play actual basketball? That would be my other handicap here. So just be careful when this game comes on the television and you're like, damn, I'm taller than half this team. <clears throat> That's a problem. Give me Grand Canyon. Again, I'm uh, also auto correcting the uh, uh, tremendous amount of dogs I took last time on the show. 5 p.m. on the West Coast. Uh, Discord doesn't get another pick because you idiots took Tarleton. You you let them you let them sway you on Tarleton. Tarleton could turn Grand Canyon over. That would be the angle. Ohio State heads to Minneapolis, Minnesota t- to the barn to take on Minnesota, who has been absolute fire against the spread this oh, season, amazing. failing only to miss covering at home against Iowa, if I'm not mistaken. Minnesota laying four here against Ohio State. New coach. I mean, I watched that press conference that the new coach uh, gave, and it was just uh, he was he was going, yeah, I don't know, I maybe I coached too hard. It was like a guy who won the lottery, like I don't know what I'm gonna do with this big check. He seemed <laughs> completely in over his head, completely surprised they won the game, emotional, like it's just there is no way they are gonna get up and go on the road and give this Minnesota team a game. I mean. You should just be auto playing Minnesota at home anyway. And Minnesota, one of the best teams, like Kramer was saying, ATS at home just in general, but especially in this spot. I mean, you're a fate, you're fading um Ohio State off that crazy win against Purdue, and then you're riding with Minnesota. This is just uh lock potential. Eleven to one ATS at home as a favorite. That's crazy. Uh all over Minnesota here. No. Uh look You're taking Ohio Jake- State? Yes. Oh, Jake, wow. That's Jake, a horrible call, Colby. Jake Diebler Cookies is doing it. He's a, look, he's see, this is his moment to become the next head coach of Ohio State. He was born and raised Not in the Ohio. Game after the game. Come he was born and raised in Ohio. Look, he's he going to show up at the stadium smelling <laughs> like Gatorade. Guy, he he got still dumped on. <laughs> he won a D2 state title at Upper Sandusky High School too. Uh I mean, he's he's this guy is through and through. Ohio, he realizes the moment. All right, he can be that you just beat the number one team. Now you go to this counterfeit ass Minnesota team. Buckeyes are live. I think they win at the barn. They're zero seven on the road this year. This is their first win right here. This is one of your worst uh, takes. Wait, uh, can I? <clears throat> oh, on top of me kind of agreeing, um, did you say Upper Sandusky? Upper Sandusky City. High. Yeah. <clears throat> Urban Dictionary has an interesting, uh, interesting <laughs> definition from from this one. Uh, it's it's used uh, in, in a sentence. Jeff got an Upper Sandusky from Mikey in the shower after gym class. So <laughs> I, I don't know if that's Kramer. A, you're on you're on Ohio um, State. No. What? Oh, okay. You said agreeing with him. No. Agreeing. Kramer no, no, was just not, saying. Kramer was just saying that he would like an Upper Sandusky at some point. I was oh, saying okay. I don't know if I can agree with order upper. an Upper Sandusky for well, Kramer. All right, so maybe we're paying a premium on the spread, maybe. But Are t- we? T- t- come on, Colby, it's college sports. You don't think you haven't seen this one before? This no, is this guy's gonna be, the- He's gonna get Ohio State to the NCAA tournament, and he's gonna be the next head coach. No, there. no, no, Colby, I I don't mind that handicap, but save that for the Big Ten conference tournament. This is the game after the Dude, game the where the barn they is bullshit. The, the, this team, Whoa. Miss Minnesota team. Is eleven to one ATS at home? No, but what are they you talking suck. About? They still suck. Watch them. <laughs> They're not a good team. Ohio State wins. Wow. That we'll see. That I mean, it's only a four point spread, but I I would make it bigger because the Colby's, situational spot. He's mad. They're getting all the attention. That's what it is. Washington. So the Kramer, Hus- you're on. You're oh, on the Gophers. Are like, they laying points or are they getting? Okay. Points? Okay. That's what I thought. It's as simple as my model with fa- uh, with tailing Noah. Washington, which by the way, I don't tailing no one college basketball, not a good strategy. Tailing no one college baseball, great strategy. Washington heads to Tempe, Arizona. 
where Arizona State. I don't mess with no devils. Catching two and a half here. Colby. Wrong team favored? Question this mark. The both coaches are gonna be fired, I think, uh, very shortly. But um Yeah, I mean I, I would lean the Washington. You lost by forty forty five points to your rival. You lost by forty five points to your rival. How are you not how has the firing not already occurred? He's got photos or something. I, he should have been fired two years ago. Um, I, I lean Washington. Mike Hopkins is a hard guy to to take. I think this is actually the hardest game to project on this whole sheet. But um, because both teams are so inconsistent, they're nonstop inconsistent. But uh, Washington, to me, has been playing better basketball of late. Sort of, they're four and six in their last ten, which is better than three and seven for Arizona State. They also, to me, I think they're a little more talented. So I will take a shot on the Huskies on the road here. Uh, they're a better offensive team. Arizona State is 333rd in offensive rating. Washington is 112th, uh, and they're both. Arizona State's got the better defense, but not by much uh, statistically. So I think that's that's all the difference is that offense for for the Huskies get them over the edge. Give me the Huskies minus the points. Yeah, maybe there's a bounce back element for this Arizona State team off that huge loss to Arizona. Kramer alluding to uh, 45 points on Saturday. If there's any, I, light, I think there's, I think it's a, I think it's a dream crusher moment. Unfortunately for this Arizona State team, to Colby's point. Uh, it feels like kind of the end of the program or at least at the end of this version. And they, they've only won two of their last what uh, eight games. So two and six last eight, they've just, I don't know. I mean, it, since, since January six, they've only won three games. Uh, they just have really fallen apart here and lost some bad. I mean, they lost the Cal at home. They lost to Stanford at home. Those are teams you should be beating at home. Now they did beat Oregon state. But Washington, uh, a much better program than them. I, I like Washington here as a small favorite, and of course, if we're going to be breaking it down, free throw percentage. Arizona mm. State, one of the worst in the country, sixty-five point three percent from the line. Want no part of that. Give me Washington. Yeah, the offense in general is just it lacks any like any sort of heart. Um, just tremendously bad at offense. Here's a fun trivia question: How uh, how many years, Sean? Or in what season is Bobby Hurley co- in 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 his Arizona State tenure? How many years has he coached at Arizona State? Wait, Bobby Hurley. <clears throat> Bobby Hurley. Arizona State. Arizona State head coach will be fired shortly. Colby believes his sources are saying. Well, they already the they already got rid of the Six athletic years? director. He is in his ninth season. Oh, okay. Hired in 2016 after a successful. Remember, he took Buffalo. To the tournament yeah. as a 12 seed back in 2015. Who can forget? He's been trash, Colby. You uh, since you brought it up, he's only had two seasons where he's gotten north of 20 wins. I it just ha, to your point, how the fuck is this guy stuck around? He must have pictures. I love fading a team with quit. He probably Washington. he Go probably ahead. went to Havasu, caught the oh, school yeah. president oh, doing yeah. something. Oh, yeah. You know, girls gone wild. He was probably yeah. all caught up in that. <laughs> Totally, but, you know, hey, totally. you want to you want to not pay taxes? You come out and see some uh, some boobs and some beads. We'll figure out the taxes later. Kramer, uh, you're in Washington. Oh, uh, lo- well, a they're favored. I was I was asking Colby if the wrong team was favored just to make sure I didn't have to make an adjustment to my model here. But yeah, give me the Huskies. Lo- uh, so, so, and I you know I don't know if it was a sign, Sean, but uh, I was walking the dogs this morning and I saw. Couple Huskies. They were new to the the, the area. Hmm. Perhaps it was a sign. Michigan heads to Evans, Evanston, Illinois. Take on Northwestern. I mean, how how bad has the Michigan basketball team fallen? Where I North, saw Northwestern's an eleven and a half point favorite against them. Did you see what <laughs> happened? They the the bus actually got a flat tire driving over Staples, <laughs> and that's not something they typically deal with up there in Michigan. <laughs> Seems like a talent deficient. I, I mean, yeah. How could? They, how is there? It, to your point, how are they this untalented? Colby? And, and well, and real quick, Colby, and to just the, the the bravery for this Northwestern sports program to rebound after the atrocious acts that occurred on their campus. Um, wow, what a place we've come to. Eleven and a half point favorites here. Six p.m. on the West Coast. Northwestern Michigan. 
I mean, I think they're untalented because Hunter Dickinson went to chase the NIL <laughs> money at Kansas. Also, they uh, Caleb Love was going to transfer there, but he couldn't make grades. And then also, Doug McDaniel has been suspended from away games. Uh, you add that to the mix, a couple other injuries, Llewellyn and a few other guys. Uh, it's just been a disaster. And your coach, your coach had a heart problem, but he's still punching security guys or strength coaches, <laughs> whatever the hell. Um, Michigan's uh, it's just a disaster. It's just been crazy. You know, you can't win a national championship and be good in basketball at the same time. So Col- Colby, let's that yeah, is, you gotta yeah. pay the piper. How how yeah. do you uh what's the logic behind the away game suspension? Oh, it's I, I've never heard of that before. It's absolutely <laughs> hilarious to me. And uh Michigan, you know, I w- house arrest? So it's a it's an academic house arrest? Is that a uh is that a thing? So he um, can't go to he can't go to the road games, but he can go to the home games. And he's their clear best player. So <laughs> let's lay it with Northwestern. Yeah. Despite you know Northwestern, you know I know Ty Berry's out for the year now, but still Northwestern at home. They built that environment. Somehow Chris Collins in the Northwestern basketball program. They must have photos too because that what. The flying squirrels with the football program got hit. The baseball team got hit. I feel like the wrestling team or volleyball team. Uh, everybody with the basketball team sitting over there looking pretty. So somehow, some way, uh, the flying squirrels okay in the in the realm of basketball. But um, yeah, Northwestern minus eleven and a half is the play. They're just been a really good team, especially at home. They're shooting the three really well this year as well. Um, just really every stat. This is one of the best coaching jobs. I I do. I feel like in the country and I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Collins gets called by Ohio state or some other schools in the off season to, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of opening positions, <coughs> Louisville. I, I'd know, say if, uh, he, if he gets hired somewhere else, then we find out what the basketball team did. Cause I have a feeling it's cause he's liked around the, uh, around the university. Well, and he went the to Duke. Coach he went to Duke. So you never know. He pro- there probably mm. a Duke grad was on Epstein Island. So they might have, he might have some pull, you know? Coach, are you su- all I know Coach is, K? uh, yeah, Chris Tucker <laughs> or uh, Eddie Griffin was not on FC Island. Uh, that's confirmed. That's c- c- from F- uh, from Eddie Griffin. Hey, Coach well, K actually, stuck him as, uh, Chris Tucker. Coach K retired actually to spend more time uh, on the island. I heard. I, I didn't, yeah, didn't want to put two and two what, together. What island it was and gardening, maybe who knew it was. Uh, he just actually likes using the hoe. Uh, Northwestern sixth in the nation at hitting the three ball. Uh, Michigan two hundred and ninety third at defending the three. Effort. All over Michigan, or sorry, Northwestern. Uh, Michigan also two and six ATS on the road. Lock it up for Northwestern and lock up Hall of Fame bets. If you haven't signed up with Hall of Fame bets yet, what are you waiting for? Download the Hall of Fame bets app or just go to hofbets.com. <laughs> Use the promo code <laughs> SGPN and get fifty percent off. Your first month over on Hall of Fame bets, uh, perfect for optimizing some parlays. <laughs> they got you covered for soccer, NBA, really uh, helpful tool. Hofbets.com, promo code SGPN, get fifty percent off your first month. Download the Hall of Fame bets app, or uh, yeah, just go to Hofbets.com. They got you covered. Promo code SGPN. Kramer, uh, for those wondering the my Champions League bets uh not going well oh, so far. no not not going well zero zero in both games Sean I feel like the soccer gods are doing this, this to me in, intentionally all right uh let's see uh I did I did have a, a nugget uh, that I blasted by earlier Grand Canyon Tarleton two of the longest uh, win sh- winning streaks in the country right now so a uh, battle between two of the best. All right, let's move along to another game that's just absolutely shocking and appalled to see this game on the card. Abbreviated card, and we're still finding time to talk about at 7 p.m. on the West Coast in Seattle, Washington, a match between a game between what I don't even know, Stephen F. Austin and Seattle, Sean. Uh, $10 out of my pocket right now. If you can tell me a Seattle's mascot as they're laying six here. Oh, the, the Redskins. Space Needles. The Redskins. The uh, they are the Redskins. They are the yeah. Red Hawks. Yeah, but they were well, the Redskins. Yeah, they're currently the Red. They're still Hawks. the Redskins. Got it. Are referring to the skin of a bird? No, 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 no. <laughs> elite, Col- elite soundboard. Colby, are that. they? Are they? Are they the Redskins? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, I'm no, confused. No. Then what are they? <laughs> um, guys. Seattle, uh, th- this place, the, they call this the ozone layer. 
Uh, they changed the name of it, but for the last couple of years, it's called the 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 like global warming stadium or something. The ozone oh, layer. Wow. I don't. Interesting. Now it's now it's called Redskin Center. But um, <laughs> uh, look, they've been twelve and three at home this year. Stephen F. Austin, who's been a force in this conference, you know, year in year out, struggling a little bit on the road, four and five. And I just I want to introduce you to. I I think we may have talked about him one time, but I don't know if that was. I, I get I get it all confused. I don't, it could have been NC Nick, um, but I'm going to quickly share something with Josh here hmm. because oh wow, what is, what's going? Look at the kid on Seattle, right? Yes, I thought did we talk about. I this? feel like we just maybe we talked yeah. about him, but bring him up, please. Um, his hair, you can just do a Google image on what I sent yes. you, Josh. But yeah. his name is Kobe <laughs> Williamson, and he is the greatest player to ever play college basketball. And uh, yeah, if you do a Google image, you'll see even better. If you do do a Google search uh, on the image side of things, and you'll really get to see that that mullet flowing. Uh, oh, oh my oh, god! And it's like <laughs> it's red too, right? The mustache too. So, that like just si- screams I, Pacific Northwest. You know, <laughs> it's he'll like Sideshow Bob if he had a jumper here. He'll be living Back. in Silver Lake in the next in the next ten years. Um, you see how smooth the side of his head is there? That's a sign he fucks. Yeah, <laughs> elite. No, this guy's great. I remember. I remember when they were playing. Uh, I remember when they were playing. Um, uh, Grand Leo Canyon. Pepe. It was Grand Canyon. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe it was Leo Pepe. Yeah. Um, Look, Seattle's 32nd in defense, and Kobe Williams is a big part of that. You can't fade that. Uh, and they're the better offensive rated team. They're they're back at home. They're in contention still. Look, this is a huge game because they're in third place, and we know that uh, you know oh, Grand Canyon and Tarleton are playing. Look, <laughs> look at this I mean, glamour <laughs> shot. Are you kidding me? I mean, I mean, I'm surprised we don't see his hog hanging out the bottom of those shorts. <laughs> Uh, look, you're telling me that guy's not t- grabbing all the scattered ass in in, in Seattle. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's just no way. There's no way it's not. Um, yes, I think Seattle's the play here at home against Stephen F. Austin, despite Stephen F. Austin being kind of the one of the blue bloods of this conference. Yeah, well, and also the turnover stuff. I mean, Stephen F. Austin, uh, 358th in the nation offensively in turnover percentage, and then you look at. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't think you can you can do that on the road because Seattle's defense, while not great in that metric, I think at home could take advantage of that. So, uh, both teams a little bit. Uh, real quick, little some disturbing, uh, disturbing <laughs> visuals, some disturbing news uh, from the internet. Real quick, uh, Sean. Yes. Seattle University actually was never called the Redskins. What? Colby is trying to push a false Money. narrative. Oh my God. What were they they were named the Chieftains. Chieftains. No, uh, they were the Redskins in the nineties. I feel like no, it, no, they changed their name from the Seattle uh, Chieftains to the Red Hawks in January of two thousand. So this wasn't even under any sort of uh, political pressure, Sean. <laughs> So I I, uh, I I will have to do a deep dive uh, to find out when, uh, but it was a year before they rejoined the NCAA uh, in 2001, where they competed in division three for a year, then bumping up to, to division two from 2002 to 2009. So uh, who knew Colby was so deep into the, uh, the college uh, <laughs> ranks. Uh, it's all right. So everyone makes mistakes. Uh, can't hold it over your head uh, forever. I uh, feel like, I feel like then there's another oh, Washington like school that was a Redskins. Email like the, the guy it, in charge. He'll let you know. Yeah. Email. Yeah, I know you found the email for the the guy in charge of college. Puget football. Sound. Yeah. Puget Sound University. Maybe there's another Redskins in the state Beautiful of Washington. Puget Sound. Yeah. Uh, been out in the. If you've never been out to the San Juan Islands uh, in the Puget Sound, absolutely fabulous. Uh, Decatur is the is the island I've been. In. No no uh, no gas motors out in Decatur. Uh, so fun fun place to visit. Uh, also terrifying to be in the water near a killer whale um, or sorry, an orca. We don't want to call them killers, even though they actually do a lot of killing. That's why we called them killer whales. In they the first like, place. I don't know. Uh, I don't know about they that. They like calling them. Uh, they, they literally are one of the few uh, creatures in, exi- in, in that live in this I saw world them kill some seals live. It was outside awesome. of humans that kill for pleasure. Yeah. So, and they fuck for pleasure too. So they're, they're, uh, they're way closer. Yeah, to he's us. one of those guys who will get penetration. And maybe they like Sunday ticket. If we put an under underwater TV, 
Would they like Scott Hansen in the red zone? <laughs> yes, sir. Oregon State heads to Berkeley. Well, not, not Scott Hansen, but they would like the red zone. All right, so you put a beaver in Berkeley, and you've got a filthy beaver. Cal laying eight and a half here, seven p.m. on the West Coast. We got a lot of late night uh, Thursday night basketball, Sean. Uh, Colby, we taking the dirty beavers and Cal? Are we uh, no. wrapping it up? Yep. Uh, look, I'm buying into uh, Mark Madsen. You know his silly ass fucking dance. I think uh, I think he's turning this program around for Cal. And uh, despite I know you look and see the record say 11 and 15, they've been in some games. And sp- considering how bad they were last year under Mark Fox, this team, you know, they should have won at Butler. They let them off the hook. They should have won against UCLA. They let them off the hook. Growing pains, but this team is turning that corner, and I really believe they have a bright future going into the ACC next year. Uh, I'm going to lay the eight and a half. Wayne Tinkle in Oregon State has been ass on the road this year. They're <laughs> zero and seven, uh, and I, I, I look. I wish the Beavers well. I, I hope they, w- I hope they prove me wrong. But I just think Cal is going to win by fifteen or sixteen here. I'll <laughs> the- lay the points. With the with, only with, reason I could talk myself into maybe taking uh, Oregon State is that Cal has Oregon on Saturday. Are we worried at all that maybe Cal is looking ahead past this Oregon State team, which it's easy to write off this Oregon State team not doing a lot right? They've been, as you said, haven't won a game on the road. Tough to take them here. I just think like they're still like learning under Mark Matz. I think they're you know you went they won like three games last year, so I think each game. You know, you're sitting there saying like, okay, we're they're understanding more what coach wants, and what this program's potential could be. So I like laying the eight and a half in this spot. I don't think they're looking ahead because they're they are still eleven and fifteen. So I mean, yeah, they're, they're, it's not like they're setting the world on fire, but they they're definitely just way better than they were a year ago. I like how you said Beaver on the road was ass. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Kramer, let's, let's lay the points with Cal. It was a great analysis. At road, road Beaver equal ass. Uh, that's how so I, I believe that is how some truckers live their life. You <laughs> uh, see Santa Barbara. Love all these late night action. It must be a real short slate. I mean, you could have gotten this down to like eight games, Colby. No big deal. You see Santa Barbara, the Gauchos head Correct. to Irvine, California to take on the Anteaters. I know my Cal <laughs> State mascots. Irvine laying 11. Uh, dude, I, I know in the past they've had some like seven foot four dudes with actual ant eaters. Uh, any, any guys on the prospect list this uh, on this roster, Colby? I mean, I don't think they, I know who you're talking about, uh, but uh, I don't, I don't think they, uh, I don't think they have anyone that big, at least on the starting li- line, <laughs> have to go down and do yeah. some man on the street stuff, figure out who um, has the ant eater on the squad. But this is a revenge spot. You, Irvine went up to Santa Barbara one by 15 earlier in the year. And this UC Santa Barbara team has been not nearly as good as the past couple of years, despite having a, some key veterans on the team. It's been a little shocking, but I still think 11 is too much. You look at what Irvine did. You know, they just played Bakersfield. They only won by six uh, Fullerton's kept it close with them a couple of times. Riverside's kept it close with them. We even beat them in Riverside. Um, I just think Santa Barbara, they're well coached. I don't understand why they're not as good this year. I mean, I know, I know they lost a couple guys, but I still thought that coming into the year, I thought they had the, maybe the best roster in the conference. So I will take the 11 right here in a rivalry game at the uh, Brent event center. What is it at the ant Hill at the ant Hill there? Um, no, I mean, I just think 11 is a little too much. I think Irvine's going to win the game. Santa Barbara loses by six, seven, something like that. Yeah. I'm with you. I mean, uh, Irvine hasn't lost a home game. They are pretty good at home, but to your point, I like the, I mean, just looking at Santa Barbara's schedule. What other games are they going to be getting up for the rest of the season? I mean, UC Irvine's the best team they're going to play. They're in conference, and they just and they already beat them earlier in the season. I think they get up for this in a big way. If the Gauchos have any fight in them, they cover this eleven. So, yeah, I'll take UCSB catching the eleven. And they've won some nice road spots. They won, you know, at the Save Mart Center there in Fresno against Fresno State. They uh, knocked off Kelly LaPepe and Loyola Marymount. Uh, only lost by two at Riverside. You know, took down Hawaii, took down uh, Bakersfield on the road. For the most part, you know, they. I just feel like they can stay within eleven. I just think that they're too talented to not stay within eleven. Weak handicap, uh, strength on strength. Irvine's uh, interior defense going to give them trouble. Irvine laying the points. I told you I was taking the favorites. <laughs> Easy handicap. Washington State heads to Tucson, Arizona. 
to take on Arizona. Arizona laying 12 against our kooks. Colby, we taking some road cougar action, Arizona. I know they're active down there. Nah, I mean, I got to take Arizona. Washington State beat them in Pullman, and Washington State's oh, won seven in a row. They're, it's the first time they've been ranked since they had Tony Bennett as a head coach. Uh, I, I like Kyle Smith's Washington State team, and I think, you know, they should, they're well worthy of being an NCAA tournament team this year. But this is a bad spot. You beat. Arizona the year before, and now you just got, I'm sorry, the game before, and you just got ranked. So ranked teams, they don't do so well in Tucson. Let me, uh, let me lay the 12 with Arizona, even though you could play the angle of the rivalry game coming off the rivalry game. Is it a letdown spot? But no, I think the fact that the Cougs beat them uh, in Pullman is, is a big enough reason for Arizona to get up. And these are the top two teams in the pac 12 right now. So Arizona, I think can solidify the one seed in the pac 12 tournament with the win here, lay the 12. No, I, I'm with you. I mean, Arizona, um, or sorry, Washington State's been really surprising in a, in a fun way. I think they could be a little frisky in the tournament. Uh, definitely profile as that type of team, but this is just a—they're just walking into a bloodbath here in Arizona. I mean, Washington State's won seven in a row. This is this is kind of where they hit the wall, um, giving up uh, almost uh, three points, uh, two percentage points at the free throw line. Not massive, but Colby nailed the handicap. Arizona. Got embarrassed in Pullman. Uh, they get right here uh, in this spot. So lay lay the twelve with Arizona. Yeah, and just a reminder: the Pac-12 does the weekend trip. So not only do we have Cougars heading to Arizona for a game, but it's a full it's a full weekend. Well, and and I mean, so they so Washington State then has Arizona State uh, Saturday, right? Yep. So yeah, I mean, uh, what I would predict is. Arizona wins covers and then Washington State uh, bounces back big time against Arizona State and it get right game Saturday. We'll see what the spread uh, spread ends up being. Yeah, and I, I would say uh, you know from from the Arizona standpoint, um, yeah, they get Washington kind of a nice uh, maybe a nice weekend to load up on Arizona on some some shorter spreads. All right, they do have Arizona State on Wednesday. I think they're looking ahead to that one, Arizona Colby. And maybe they, you know what though? I think Arizona has a chance to get Hurley. Fi- Do they fire Hurley after they get thumped on Wednesday, February twenty eighth against Arizona? I mean, no, they'll, it, pro- right? they'll probably keep him. They'll probably oh. keep him to see if he. Well, actually, what do you do here? Because Arizona State's a talented roster, so they they could win the Pac twelve tournament. Like, I I I don't. I wouldn't favor them to, but I think it's certainly possible that roster could do that. So do you fire, fire Hurley so he that. doesn't have the chance yeah. to do that? Got to get rid of him before that. Would yeah. be, that would be horrible if he accidentally yeah. went on a run. I mean, that, eh, you can't do that. Like, get him out of here. Get he'll go sit on his brother's bench. He'll be annoying over there. Um, by the way, it was pretty fun watching that Ainsworth kid on Creighton, completely unrelated, who looked like a Dan Hurley motherfucker, <laughs> completely eat up Dan Hurley's squad, uh, Creighton UConn uh, last night. But yeah, I, I mean, like the clip of Dan Hurley going into the locker room when the uh, Creighton fans are giving him a hard time, and he said, "I think he said something like, i 'I'll fuck you up.' You know, yeah, it looks right. like he like, says like 'I'll fuck you up to the fan.' Fantastic. Let's see. Let's make that happen." But I yeah, thought, they kept yelling, "Welcome to Omaha! Welcome to Omaha!" <laughs> Have some bravery, Dan. I thought you were. I thought you were over your uh, your erratic ways. All right, so we're all on Arizona. Yes. And furthermore, Sean says mechanical parlay it with uh, with Washington State the next game against Arizona State. Is that, Let's go. Is that the suggestion? Yes. Such a sharp maneuver. Such a sharp play. Oregon heads to Palo Alto, California. Take on Stanford. This one's a pick 'em. 8 p.m. on the West Coast. I've noticed uh, places it's harder and harder to find the open uh, parlay, Sean, where you can you can start oh. building the parlay with an open spot spot to fill later. <laughs> Ducks uh, heading to uh, I would assume what do they uh, they line up and then they circle a tree. That's how they attack the Stanford Cardinal. Uh, pick 'em here, Colby. What are we doing? I mean, I'm pretty. The line reeks. The line absolutely Uh-oh. reeks. Uh-oh. I mean, look, uh, Stanford, Jared Haas, st- still somehow coaching, but m- much like Bobby Hurley, maybe even worse to me. Uh, unless, uh, what Stanford though, Arizona State, you should be able to win because you can anyone can get into Arizona State. Um, but Stanford's been a weird team up and down all year. You know, you saw them, uh, uh, but beat UCLA, uh, beat Arizona by like twenty in Palo Alto. They've had good wins, man. They took down Utah. 
but they've also lost to a bunch of like Santa Clara. They lost to Michigan, uh, whose ass they got destroyed by Northern Iowa earlier in the year. It's been a hard gauge to to tell if Stanford's good or not and when they're going to get up. Uh, the line though is telling you that Stanford is going to get up because Oregon has been very good this year. They're in third place. They're still alive for the Pac-12. Dana Altman, I would say, doing a great job this year. A lot of people had Oregon in fifth and sixth and seventh in the in the in the preseason. So uh, clearly, way ahead of schedule. But man, I, the line is telling you. I'll take a shot on Stanford. They're nine and four at home, and like I said, they did blow out Arizona, who's currently the, in first place. They they played a lot better at home than on the road. Uh, the line doesn't make any sense to me. Give me I'm, Stanford. I'm, I'm all over uh, Stanford. I think this is actually a pretty decent situation spot because you have Oregon, who just went into Corvallis, uh, eked out a win against Oregon State. So I think this is kind of a, a letdown spot for them. Uh, like this a lot for Stanford. So yeah, give me Stanford at home. Well, you you mentioned the line stinks, and you often refer to that as Courtney Love. Colby, did you know Courtney Love is from San Francisco, mm. the Bay Area? So perhaps. The Ooh. the world is speaking to you here. Let's take Stanford. No team favorites or wrong teams favorite. This is my one. This is my one dog right here. <laughs> for, the, for the record, um, I plan on using <laughs> my dog. Is st- <laughs> all right. Discord enjoy Oregon. Never right. seen a duck take take down a tree, Sean. Never. No, no, you never know. Maybe they, a beaver. Beavers a are built for taking down trees. We'll Not see if duck. the ducks uh, get it done. Okay, time for our best bets for February twenty second. We got a couple locks and a money line dog. Kramer, uh, I really did it. I outdid my myself. Even uh, I'm impressed with this card. It's beautiful. Minnesota minus four. No, oh, yes. Purdue minus sixteen. <laughs> so you're playing both angles of that uh, Ohio State game. Dog, uh, give me a little. Uh, I I don't want uh, I don't want to get made fun of here, so we'll uh, we'll do a little parlay here. If you could give me a Washington minus the points with Arizona minus the points, and then Washington minus two and a half parlayed with Arizona minus twelve. Yep, and then we're also going to parlay in Washington State when they play Arizona State on Saturday. So um, you don't have to write that. Down. Okay, that, that, the world will understand that when we cash on Thursday, we're going to reinvest that all in a Washington State play for Sun for Saturday. Uh, give me the Minnesota Gophers at home lane four. This is a massive, massive letdown spot. Great pick, Sean, for Ohio State. I, I mean, it just is. It's uh, great pick. It's uh, it's going to be really tough for Ohio State to get up uh, for the game. I agree with Colby. I do like uh, what the coach is bringing to the program, but coming off that massive win against Purdue, huge letdown opportunity. Uh, speaking of letdown, this Michigan team has been a letdown the entire season. Uh, it's a little crazy that uh, we got Northwestern favored by eleven and a half against Michigan, but it is the right play. Michigan horrible on the road, and Northwestern is just going to light them up from behind the arc. Give me the. Big favorite here, Northwestern Lane, eleven and a half. For my dog, um, yeah, I'm gonna go uh, SMU and the Mustangs on the money line. I think Florida Atlantic, a uh, little too, uh, a little too much of a favorite here, laying the five and a half. Ooh. SMU, solid team, uh, and I like the, I like their chances here. Colby going against the Owls. Uh, let's lock up. Seattle, the red, the the wannabe Redskins oh. with uh, I like I like with, Seattle yeah. minus six. Seattle minus six. The other lock will be Purdue minus sixteen. Purdue's going to destroy him. See, I mean, um, just effectively copied all my locks. I love it, guys. It's good team. The d- the dog is Tarleton State. They're going to win out, right? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I like Tarleton and, State as well. And uh, as far as a parlay goes, I mean, we should uh, consider. Some 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 winners this time, um, and I think what we should we do just, is to what's that? Yeah, what were we gonna throw out, Colby? I was gonna throw out Charlton <laughs> parlayed with 
Oh, I'm sorry. This could be a Sean and Colby special because we're well, or, a couple of sharps. Or, or, or maybe do we keep it simple? Purdue, we all like. We all like Cal. Seattle. Cal, Cal, and Cal. Well, I was gonna say Northwestern, Wait, but I was Cal. yeah. Purdue, Northwestern, and Cal feels like uh, Purdue. Purdue, Northwestern, and Cal. Colby, you like that? Fade one? the dog shit on the card. Yeah, like it. I like Seattle actually probably more than. Uh, oh. More than Northwestern. Yeah, th- though, though, just because I feel like Northwestern could be up twenty and call off the dogs, but yeah, th- throw in uh, if you guys want to throw in Seattle for four, but it's okay. You want to do three? I understand it. I understand. We're gonna you guys, do Seattle. You know? Make it, make it, uh, make it, make it fourteen parlay. Let's go. Whatever. Fine. Let's fucking go. Fine. We can call this the Garden House. You guys don't even take my V seriously. What's your V? My value. Oh, what's your? I value? don't talk about EV anymore. Well, all right. So what do you want to say? No, no, this is just, I'm, I'm making a joke about the riskiness of my value now. Okay. Never mind. I was going to say that wasn't for you. It was for the, I was going to add on to your dog shit comment and we can call this a garden hose. Get the dog shit off your shoe. Purdue laying 16 Northwestern laying 11 and a half Cal laying eight and a half and Seattle laying (laughs) six. Can we just get the sound of that machine at the golf course that like <laughs> spins and helps clean your spikes? Oh yeah, we, that's this part. It's Thank almost you for co- participating in the sports gambling podcast. It's kind of like a buzz saw. Yeah, it's a it's a go- it's a country club buzz saw. For the sports gambling podcast, I'm Sean. Second the money green. He's Ryan. Thoughts and prayers for Terrell as he tries to enter the country club today. Kramer, let it ride.